Three of Russ Meyer's best films all came out in the same year, 1965. Mud Honey, Motor Psycho, and Faster Pussycat Kill Kill. It boggles the mind how this was even possible. And not only are these three of Russ Meyer's best films, some film critics like Roger Ebert and Robert McGee think that these are three of the best films from the 1960s, and they all came out in 1965. Amazing! <laughs> Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob, and today I'm taking a look at Mud Honey from 1965. In 1964, Russ left the nudie cuties and the pseudo-documentaries behind and released Lorna. It was a rather nasty, um, roughy, and it did very good business at the box office. And so, with many of the same actors in tow, Russ returned to the place where he shot Lorna, the Sacramento Delta, and he filmed Mud Honey. This is a Depression-era exploitation drama. Let's check it out. We open on some feet. Don't get too excited, feet people. This scene is more Hitchcock than Tarantino. And from the background noises, we can tell this man is leaving a cat house. He drives home through the credits. His wife won't let him in, and he causes a ruckus. She eventually gives in, and we see some faces for the first time. The man is feeling a bit, um, thirsty, and he enjoys some grape soda with his wife. The next day we meet our hero, Caliph. He's a Michigander on his way to California. The beautiful and mute Euler takes a liking to him. That's uh, Rena Horton, by the way. Uh, Russ met her when he was in Germany making Fanny Hill, and they dated for a while. Anyway, Caliph learns that there's some work in the area at the Wade Farm, but it's not exactly safe. But again, this is the Depression, and he is a bit desperate, so he heads off to the Wade Farm. There he meets Hannah, who we saw in the opening scene, and her uncle. And hey, check it out! That's Meyer regular Stuart Lancaster. This is his first Meyer film. Here he plays a nice, uh, fatherly type, and uh, at first he doesn't want to hire Wade because Hannah's husband Sidney is around, and eh, he doesn't exactly make for the best working environment. This is the danger that Caliph learned about earlier. Sidney, he isn't much of a worker, and he uh, spends most of his time hanging around that cat house. Uh, he can't afford to buy anything, yet, uh, but he assures them that he'll be rich one day as soon as old man Wade dies and leaves the farm to Hannah. But, you know, uh, cat house types, uh, they don't work on IOUs. What Sidney doesn't know is that throughout the course of the movie, old man Wade will take a liking to Caliph, and he will secretly put the farm and some money into a trust account in Caliph's name. This is his attempt to keep things away from Sidney. But Sidney's not going to go down without a fight. He buddies up with a local preacher, and the two of them spread rumors around town that Caliph is trying to break up Sidney's marriage. This turns the conservative town against Caliph. As the film progresses, Sidney becomes more and more unhinged. Caliph and Hannah grow closer and closer. The town becomes more and more volatile. And old man Wade's health becomes worse. But that's enough out of me as far as plot goes. Let's talk some highlights. Well, like every Russ Meyer film, this one is beautifully photographed. Great angles, great close-ups of interesting faces. And it's all edited together very well. Here in Mud Honey, Russ is getting closer to that fast-paced collage-style editing that will be a big part of his style in later years. Beyond these technical things, Hal Hooper turns in an impressively vile performance here. And he starts off as a violent drunk who has some, you know, uh, grape soda with his wife. And by the end, he's a snarling madman who has become completely detached from reality. Great, great villain, and one of the better performances in a Russ Meyer film. The rest of the cast is pretty good, too. Stuart Lancaster is, of course, awesome. And Furlong, as the, you know, everyman hero, Caleb, is pretty good, especially considering this is his very first role. But I really have to praise the menagerie of hicks that Russ has put together for this film. They are just wild. From the toothless, cackling, aged-out prostitute to the shirtless, bearded ape in overalls and the cockeyed tree climber, these people are cartoon characters come to life. And at the center of this group is where we find the film's two Russ Meyer gals, Lorna Maitland and Rena Horton. And they are beautiful. There's maybe not as much skin here as you might expect from a Russ Meyer film, but there is some. 
Highlights in this regard include numerous down blouse shots, some flashing, Lorna Maitland skinny dipping, and Rena Horton bathing outside in a large bucket. <laughs> That's pretty hot. Finally, the story. This isn't, of course, you know, The Grapes of Wrath, but it is simple and effective, and it builds quite nicely to one hell of a frenetic ending. This is one of Russ Meyer's more accessible films, and if you're looking to dip your toes into one of his strange and wonderful worlds, uh, this is a good place to start. But I suppose it's not perfect. Like a cockeyed tree climber watching Lorna Maitland swim, it has some shortcomings. Well, I really like this movie a lot, and I don't really have anything to complain about, but I do think some people might be a little bit turned off by the melodramatic aspects of the film. I mean, some of the dialogue here, some of the performances, they do... they go a bit hammy at times. I mean, the sheriff's character is a good example here. But this doesn't bother me at all. This is a low-budget movie using mostly no-name actors. You know, some poor performances are to be expected. Plus, it's easy to forgive a little unintentional camp when we get to watch Rena Horton take a bath in a bucket. 